This is Don Brill. This is in our series of videos showing the designs of the small scale rice holders that we come up with. I'm going to now take this one apart, but before I do that, I'm going to put in a little clip of uh, this one hauling rice in case people haven't seen the other video in diameter. So we're going to open this up. I'm going to start running this through. Our chains have to be loose on here because the chains do not stretch at the loads we are at, so the chains are very low. We want this thing to open and close. All right, I'm going to take this now and winnow it, and we'll see what we have. So now that you've just seen that video of the uh, of this one hauling rice, we're going to start taking it apart. So all of our haulers have the same thing in common. We have this uh, spring, and then a method of setting the gap, so we can control the load. That's this right here. It's basically, let me hold it up here. It's got these two one inch angle braces, a bolt that runs through. This is a lock nut. These are the nuts that have the uh, plastic inserts. We have a uh, relatively high compression spring right here. So we compress this spring, excuse me, and it applies the uh, load to our rice hauler. As the rice goes through, this will allow the uh, gap in here to enlarge. So now let me just start taking this apart. So these are sprockets and chain. This one is a number 11. We're using 35 chain. This is a 22 sprocket. These are the two idlers that match our chain. We're now using uh, a number 35 chain. So these all drive the two sprock, the uh, two haulers. This one goes this way, this one comes this way, this one is at 50% of this one because of the ratio in the sprockets. This is the one that does the work. So I'm going this way, this one's going this way, but as the rice gets pulled, this one actually has to resist this shear effect. These are bolts in here. This one is on a uh, slot. This is how I'm adjusting my chain tension. This is just a half inch bolt. It's, uh, I think they're two and a half inches long. This is our feed hopper. Let me turn this around. So the feed hopper is being driven by this chain, which we also keep slack. All of the chains need to be slack because we have to allow this to open. This is our uh, handle. What we do there is we just, I put a collar on here, I take this, this was a half inch slot, I had to cut some of the metal off. I run it through, I drill a hole, run a nut through, and then uh, on this side I put another one of these collars to uh, lock this in. So this is the chain, and on this particular case, this one was a 10, 10 tooth and this one has 11, so it's going to run a little bit slower than my drive. You could make this one even bigger, like a 15, or if you made it up to 22, this would go, this feed would be 50%. So let me turn this around. So let me get the uh, tool that you need if you're going to buy a chain, which you're going to buy, and then you have to uh, 
put a link in. So this is a standard tool for removing links. Simply goes on here, you turn this, it'll push the pin through, then you go to the other side, you push it, you push the pin through, and then this will just pop right off. This one, it already has a link in it somewhere. So once you get these chains all have to be made to match your uh, length. These little bearings, this is the light duty. This would be a standard and you can see how much bigger this is. So we went with the uh, light duty. Now if I take this off, this is our hopper. That's our sidewall. This is how we did the back. This is a clearance hole. These are two holes and then I recessed them so that these bolt heads would not stick out. And what I did here was this is just even with this and even here. So this, what you're seeing now, this is my hopper. I hold it in place with these. They're, they're attached to this. And then I have another brace back here. This is a slide. The rice would sit here. And then it, uh, as I open this gate, the rice slides down. This has moved a bit. This distance right in here needs to be a half an inch or more. The rice puddles right in here. This is my half inch shaft. I have, I've inside here, I've taken tape and I use duct tape, wrapped it around until I got to three quarters to seven eighths of an inch in diameter. Then this is my um, 36 grit sandpaper. You could use 36 up to 50 and it'll pull the rice over and I use sanding belt and then I glue this on somewhere. There are other videos showing how we do that. You just basically cut it to size, wrap the inside of it, and we use a five minute epoxy. So that's how this works. And that's pretty straightforward. Set this angle at about 30 degrees. This has the cut on it. I come in here and I'm about halfway into the diameter of this uh, roller there. This is our basic unit. It's loose here so I don't want to sit like that. I can adjust the gap here as I said earlier. Now I'm going to try and take this guy apart. So this should pull off of here. This is my one half. This is the other half. And on our web page, we show the dimensions of this, how to build it. These are the two rollers that we use. Here's our... So these are the two rollers. Inside of here, which I'll show you in a minute, are, uh, is a wooden plate. The shaft has been centered in here. Then I simply filled this with a uh, mortar mix to lock this in. So it looks like that. This slide is under here to catch the rice and send it out. There's a bolt here that it sits on. So now let me show you this details of how I make that. Okay. 
So this is the roller, the uh, RP57 from Stoltz. It does have some flex to it, and it is not perfectly round. This one we have not modified at all. This is how it comes. So in the, on the web page it says how to build this. This is a uh, 2 and 3 eighths with a hole in the middle. Then I put quarter 20 uh, bolts in it. These uh, holes that are drilled in here are 7 30 seconds. Then I take this, a right angle, set it like this, get it even all the way around. Then to verify, of course, that's the way it is on both ends. And on our web page, we do say how to uh, build one of these if you're not familiar with that. I spin this in here to verify that uh, it's square. I'll see if I can turn this so you can see it. Oops, wrong way. So now, I'm going to take this and spin this. And it is a little off, but these things aren't true. And I could tweak this a little bit more until I get it as perfect as possible. Now our spring system is going to let this thing move back and forth. So as this goes off a little bit, you just don't want to be in a really bad shape. So the unit, this is the first thing you do. You get this in here, you put these screws on. This part, you actually want to put something in in here. Uh, something so that when you put your epoxy in it doesn't flow through. You could use a paste epoxy on this side and then a flow epoxy here and remember these all have to be roughened. The shaft has to be roughened. Maybe put a, a, a flat on it and the insides of these need to be roughened. Here I actually just went with a saw and cut some uh, notches in it. So the unit so I've taken the unit and and reassembled it a little bit so now we got a true cutaway there would have been the sidewalls here with these uh, various sprockets and chains so you put the rice in here open up this gate this would spin, the rice gets drawn over the top, and it drops down in between these rollers. Then these rollers are spinning. There's a shear effect in here. It drops out, hits this slide, and comes out. We've made this so that you would put this over the end of your table and then have a fan blowing on the rice to get rid of the husks. So it's pretty much that simple. I'll just leave this up for a while here so you can get an idea. So you, you basically take three quarter inch plywood. This actually could be cardboard if you don't want to buy uh, this wood with a smooth finish. These are just supports. This is the same width. This is three inches wide so everything here, this belt you can buy that's three inches wide. This is three inches wide. You just got to make sure as you assemble it that everything keeps spinning. Now one last thing I'm going to see if I can give it a try is these uh, bearings. don't know if you're going to be able to see this. These bearings are actually self-aligning. So one can... You can see how I've just moved that. So what happens is, if, the, if there's an issue, you can use the bearing to realign it. And what I do is I get them aligned and I just keep working it till these are parallel. So we're using these self-aligning bearings. These are the lightweight ones. Using the spring with the uh, gap setter. These rollers first pass we got 77 percent it took us to do one pound we tried it three times 
one pound took two to three minutes. Then the next passes, without separating, took a minute and a half. So one pound was the equivalent, we're thinking of about maybe five, uh, five minutes to do a pound, which would be 10 pounds an hour. If you separate it, if it's a short grain, you separate it, you'll do uh, even better. So good luck. You can contact me on my webpage if you'd like.